Thinkorswim is an incredibly powerful trading platform jam-packed with an insane amount of tools and functionality, which can end up being a bit much for new traders. Now, luckily for us, a much simpler web-based version of Thinkorswim was just recently released, and it was created specifically for those people who want a much cleaner and more simple trading platform. So today, we're going to be diving into the Thinkorswim web app to specifically learn how to buy and sell options contracts within there. For those of you watching who have never used the TOS web platform, it can be accessed by heading to the website trade.thinkorswim.com. You'll then need to type in the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. And then once logged in, you will immediately notice that it looks quite a bit different than the desktop version of Thinkorswim. Coming over here to the far left hand side, we're going to find our main navigational tabs, including the positions tab, the trade tab, and the charts page. At the moment, since I currently have the positions tab selected, you'll notice that over here on the right, I currently have a list of all of my open and working positions, as well as all of my working orders, if I had any. You might have also noticed that over here on the left hand side, within the web version of Thinkorswim, there's actually a little toggle above our account info section, which allows us to seamlessly flip between live trading and paper money. Once I flip over to paper money, you can tell I'm in there a few different ways, whether it be the fact that the Thinkorsim logo up here in the upper left hand corner has turned to a gold color. And down here below my actual account info section, it does tell me that these are simulated values. So at the moment, this paper money account is currently worth $206,588.40. Now, in our case for today, we're going to be sticking to the paper money version of Thinkorswim Web so we can get a little bit of practice with this app. Since we're going to be specifically learning how to trade options in today's video, we're going to first need to pull up a stock to trade. So to do that, we're going to come to the very top of our Thinkorswim Web app and find the little box marked Find a Symbol. In there, we're then going to go ahead and type in the stock that we want to trade, which in this case, let's say we wanted to pull up Google. G-O-O-G, -O -O and just hit enter on the keyboard. You can now see that we are automatically taken to the Google stock profile page, and right down here in the center of the screen, it shows us a whole bunch of info about Google. Coming over here to the top right hand corner, we can see the current price of Google, $93.46 a share, as well as a big red sell button and a big green buy button to actually buy or sell the stock itself. We can also see a little bit more info about Google as a company right down here below, like how many shares have been traded today. We can see the market cap or basically the size of the company, the dividend yield if it paid one. And if we look a little bit further down the page, we can also see a nice little Google chart right here in the center of our screen. But what you might have missed and what we want to talk about in today's video, if we scroll back up this page, you'll actually notice a little tab here marked Option Chain. The very first thing that we want to do to actually open up that option chain is just come over here to the left and click on this little drop down arrow. From there, we'll then be able to see all of the available options expirations right down here below on the left hand side of the option chain. So right here we can see the very first expiration coming up is the December 16th expiration. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, it does go all the way out to the January 17th of 2025 expiration. Just the right of those expirations, we can also see how many days out that expiration actually is. So in the case of the December 16th expiration, that is four days from today. December 23rd is 11 days from today. And I think you get the idea. Now, before we actually open up one of those options expirations, the very last thing you'll notice is that over here on the far right hand side of the option chain, we can also see the implied volatility for that expiration, as well as the implied move in parentheses. So again, if we just stick to the 16 December expiration, the very first one in the list, it currently has an implied volatility of 56.13% and an implied move of just over $4 a share. Now, once we've actually decided what expiration it is that we wanted to trade, we simply have to find it. So come over here on the left hand side. And for this one, let's go ahead and open up the January 20th of 2023 expiration. So about 39 days from today. You'll then notice that as soon as I click on it, we can see a list of a few of the available strikes right down the center here. So to get a better look at that, let me go ahead and scroll down this page just a little bit. And now right up here at the top, we can see it begins with the $89 strike and goes all the way out to the $98 strike. Now, if you ever wanted to see further out of the money, you wanted to get a list of more available strikes, you could actually do that a couple different ways. 
The first way is coming back up to the top of our option chain to the upper right hand corner where it currently says strikes 12. And if we click on that, we can then toggle through the list right down here below to adjust the number right here. So if we instead wanted to see 18 available strikes, we'll just come down here below and select 18. And now coming down here to the center, we can look down below and we can see the list of available strikes now goes from 87 all the way out to 102 and a half. Now we could have also just come up to the top or bottom where it currently says more and actually clicked on that to expand the list out further if we wanted to. So if we wanted to go a little bit further out of the money on the call side, we'll come down here and click on the word more. Now scrolling down, you can see I've expanded it quite a bit. I now have the 105 through the 115 as well. But besides the strikes, you'll also notice at the top of the option chain, you can also see some column headers telling you the information that's being displayed down below. So at the moment, you can see the very first column in this list is the current delta. Then we've got the probability and the money, as well as the current bid and asking price of that option. Essentially just the current price of that option contract right now. In order to adjust those, we would just come to the very top of our option chain and click on the little gear icon to the right of the word strike. From there, you can then see a list of all of the visible columns over here on the left hand side, as well as all of the columns we could add over here on the right hand side. Now you probably notice that I actually have four visible columns over here on the left, but at the moment I'm only currently seeing probability in the money and delta. And that's just because the way I have my screen currently laid out, it doesn't have enough room to fit all of these columns in here. But if I actually did make enough room for them, these other two columns would appear above the option chain. And since I actually want to keep those columns exactly the way they are, I'm just going to come up here to the upper right hand corner and hit close to save it. Now the last thing I'll mention, and what I probably should have mentioned a second ago, is that to the left of all of these strikes is going to be all of the available call options. To the right are all of the available put options. You may have also noticed that all of the in the money options are shaded with a kind of grayish background, whereas all of the out of the money options have more of a dark background. But now that you have a basic idea of what it is we're looking at here and how to customize the option chain a little bit, in order to place the trades themselves, it's actually pretty easy. Just like within the regular Thinkorsim desktop platform, whenever you want to buy an option contract, you are simply going to click on the asking price. Whenever you want to sell an option contract, you are simply going to click on the bid price. So jumping right into it and going through a few different examples, let's say we were actually bullish on Google right now. We thought the stock was going up. Well, in that case, one thing we could do is look at buying a long call option. And the very first thing we have to do is pick out the strike price that we wanted to buy. And you can see here I've got quite a few visible, whether it be from the 87 strike all the way down to the 115 strike. But for right now, let's just say we wanted to buy an option contract right at the money. So with Google currently trading at $93.52 a share, it looks like the right at the money call would be the 94 strike call. To the left of the strike there, we can see the option is currently trading for $4.30 by $4.35. Since we do want to buy that option contract, we are simply going to click on the current asking price of that option right now. So we're going to click on $4.35. You'll then notice that as soon as I did that, down here below it built out an order ticket to buy those call options. So looking in this order ticket from left to right, it says we want to buy 10 of the January 20th, $94 calls, and we're going to be paying $4.35 a piece for them. Keeping in mind that each option contract represents 100 shares of stock, then if we were to actually buy 10 of them at $4.35 a piece, this trade is actually going to cost us $4,350. And that's a little bit much for me right now, so let's come over here to the left and adjust this down from 10 contracts down to 1 contract. We can then come over here to the price and adjust the price as needed if we wanted to. But in my case, I'm going to leave it set to 435 because I want to buy this contract right now. To the right of that, we could adjust the order type if we wanted to. But at the moment, we are going to leave it set as a limit order, meaning I want to buy it at this price or better. We could also come over here to the right and flip this over from a day order to a GTC order if we wanted to, essentially saying if this order does not fill today, go out again every single day until it actually fills. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it set to a day order. And now that I'm happy with that, everything looks right. In order to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit that big review button. It'll then bring up a little order confirmation screen just to confirm that everything looks right. 
So right up here above, we can see the total cost of this trade is gonna be $435 plus the 65 cent commission. So $435.65 in total. But then once we've confirmed everything looks right to actually place it, we'll just come down here below and hit the send button one more time. Now that the order has been placed in order for us to keep an eye on it, we could do that a few different places. Whether that be by simply scrolling up this page a little bit and then minimizing the option chain, we can actually see all of my Google trades right down here below. So right here, it says I've got one of the January 20th, $94 calls, and it's currently trading for $4.22. And at the moment, I'm down about $2.50 since buying it. We could also see that by simply coming back up here to the positions tab in the upper left-hand corner. Then coming over here to the right to our position section, we can see the Google position right here. And if I click on that little arrow to the left of it, we can now see the Google position right here. Again, saying the exact same thing as before. I've got one of the January 20th, $94 calls. If the time ever came that you wanted to close out of this position, so we wanted to sell it, we could do that by simply clicking on it. It's then going to take us right back to the trade page to that same screen we were on before. And down here below, we can see the position. To the left of the position, you can see I have a little checkmark box next to it. And since that's checkmarked, if we were to come to the lower right hand corner and hit the close selected button, I'm saying I want to close out that long call option. So down here below in the order ticket, we're now saying we want to sell one of the January 20th $94 calls for $4.20 a piece. Now, in my case, since I want to fill right away, I'm just going to flip this over from a limit order to a market order, essentially saying I'll sell it for whatever the current price is. Just get me out immediately. Now, in order to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit review, then hit send one more time to actually submit it. And now that it's done, you can see the Google trade has been closed out and it now tells me I don't have any positions on Google right now. If we instead wanted to buy a put option, the process is nearly identical. So let's first come up here to the top where it currently says find a symbol and let's go ahead and pull up the stock Apple, AAPL. We can again see we're taken directly to the Apple stock profile page and we can see how Apple is currently doing today. Looks like it is up today. And now in order for us to see the option chain for Apple, we'll just come down here below and click on the little arrow to the left of option chain. From there, we can then select the option expiration that we wanted to trade. And in this case, let's just go out to the most recent expiration, December 16th. Coming down below, if we look at the list of available put options, let's say we wanted to go slightly out of the money. And in this case, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the 140 put, which looking to the right, I can currently see it's trading for 154 by 156. So in this case, since we want to buy the put option, we are going to click on the current asking price, which right now is $1.55. You can now see the order ticket down here below is set up to buy 10 of the December 16th, 140 puts. Let's go ahead and adjust this down from 10 to, let's say two. I only want to buy two put options for right now. I can then come down below to the price and let's say I didn't want to buy it at the current price. I only wanted to buy it if I could get it for let's say a dollar and 30 cents or better. I'm also gonna leave it set to a day order only, saying that if this order does not fill today, if I don't actually buy these contracts for a dollar 30 today, I don't wanna try again tomorrow. But now that that's done, we could go ahead and hit review and send, and we're simply gonna be placing an order to buy those two put options. But what if we wanted to put a bracket order on the outside of this, saying that if this order fills, I automatically wanna put in a specific profit target or a stop target. So in order for us to do that, we are gonna be coming down here below where all of these advanced order buttons are at, and we're gonna click on the one marked advanced orders. From there, we're gonna come up here above, and I said I wanted to create a bracket order, which is both a profit-taking order and a stop-loss order. So that's gonna be the one marked first triggers OCO. You're then gonna get what looks like a little bit of a mess, but up here at the top is our opening trade. So again, our opening trade to buy these two contracts if it ever goes down to $1.30. Right below that, it then tells us that if that happens, then these two other orders are going to go out there. The first one being in order to sell this for a specific profit target, which in this case, let's say we wanted to sell it if it ever went back up to $2. But then right below that, we can also see we have a stop loss order to get us out before we lose too much money. 
So in this case, you can see the current stop is set to $1.64. And we're going to go ahead and flip that over to something that makes a little bit more sense. And in this case, we'll make it a dollar. And the very last thing I want to do is actually specify that if the opening trade fills and these two bracket orders go out there, I want these orders to work indefinitely. So I'm going to flip them both over to GTC orders. Now that that's done, in order to place it, we'll just come down here below and hit the review button. It'll then bring up a little order confirmation screen just like before that everything looks right. And if it does, we'll then just go ahead and hit the send button. Now that all those orders have been submitted, if we were to go back to the positions tab, again up here in the upper left hand corner, then come over here to the right and instead focus on the activity section, we can now see all three of those orders right here. The first of which being the order to buy to open those two Apple contracts, then followed by the bracket order, which is only going to get submitted if the opening trade fills, if we actually buy those two contracts. Now, I know I went through those bracket orders incredibly fast, and that's because I'm going to make a completely separate video going much more in depth on how to do that within the Toss web app, so be on the lookout for that. I'm also going to be making a completely separate video on how to trade spreads within here. So things like verticals and our condors. So again, subscribe if you want to keep an eye out for those ones. But hopefully after that, you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with how to trade options within the Thinkorswim website. And if you're already familiar with the Thinkorswim desktop platform, you should have no issues placing those same types of trades within the web app. Now, if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. And again, be on the lookout for my OCO bracket order videos and my vertical spread videos on how to do it in here. But otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one.